<laughs> and then I met 12-year-old Gavin and his brother and sister. Gavin met Jackson two years ago after he'd been told he was dying of cancer. Isn't that great? Not sick at all. No more cancer. All gone. All gone. He's taller than me now. <laughs> when they told him he was going to die. Isn't that great? They told us to, they told my parents to plan for his funeral because there was no chance. They, said, they told the parents they to, told plan for to plan funeral. for his funeral. They the told he wasn't going to grow, he wasn't going to be able to have kids. I got a he, was, he had growth spurts during chemotherapy. I went from 4 foot 10 to 5 foot 4. See? Medicine don't know it all, do they? It was one night I stood in and he had asked him if I could stay in the bedroom. Hey, let me stay in the bedroom. And I was like, Michael, you can sleep, sleep on the bed. And he was like, no, 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 you sleep on the bed, sleep on the bed. We're like, no, 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 you sleep on, you sleep on the bed. And then he finally said, okay, if you love me, to sleep on the bed. I was like, oh, man. And so I finally slept on the bed. But it was fun that night. I slept on the floor. Uh, I wasn't sleeping back. No, I he, just, he packed the whole rest of blankets on the floor. <laughs> what? But Michael, you know, you're a 44-year-old man now. Yeah. What, what do you get out of this? What do you get out of this? Uh, uh, we'll hear that children from other families have come and they've stayed in your house. Mm. They've stayed in your bedroom. Um, well, so, very few. But, you know, some have. And they say... Is that really appropriate for a man, a grown yeah. man, to be doing that? How do you yeah, respond yeah. to that? I feel sorry for them because that's judging someone who wants to really help people. What can I felt very uneasy after this conversation. I knew I had to confront Jackson about what I thought was an obsession with children. Tell me why you developed Neverland. Because I wanted to have a place that I could create everything that I, that I never had as a child. So you see rides, you see animals, there's a movie theater. I was always on tour, traveling, you know, and uh, I never got a chance to do those things. So I compensated for the loss right I have a good t I mean I can't go into a park I can't go to Disneyland as myself I can't go out and walk down the street there's crowds and bumper to bumper cars and so I create my world behind my gates everything that I love is behind those gates we have elephants and giraffes and crocodiles and every kind of tigers and lions and and we have busloads of kids who don't get to see those things they come up sick children and enjoy it mm -hmm. they enjoy it in a pure loving fun way it's people with a dirty mind that think like that i don't think that way that's not me years ago i allowed a family to visit and spend some time at neverland neverland is my home i allowed this family into my home because they told me their son was ill with cancer and needed my help I've helped many, many, many children, thousands of children, cancer kids, leukemia kids. This is one of many. When I first saw him, he was totally bald-headed, white as snow from the chemotherapy, very bony, looked anorexic, no eyebrows, no eyelashes. And he was so weak, I would have to carry him from the house to the game room or push him in a wheelchair to try to give him a childhood, a life, because I felt bad. So my heart go out to those children. I feel their pain. My children and me know what rejection is, to be neglected, to be spit on, to be talked about, to be made an outsider, only because of our status in life or what we were going through 
and Michael did not have that. He said, come to him, not just Gavin, but Star and Davelin and me, and called us his family. And Gavin was the one that asked him, could I call you daddy? And Michael said, of course. And so through him, it sparked Star and, Gav and Davelin calling him Daddy Michael. Very innocent and beautiful relationship, which everyone has spun it out of control. It's a wish come true. <laughs> For example, to see my children interact with an ideal role, a father role model. Um, he plays with them, laughs with them. He uh, lets them win. <laughs> he wrestles with them. He, and um, he makes jokes with them. Um, Go on the rides together. He watch, shows them. Watch movies together. He shows them the basic foundation of what life is, and that's a loving family. The stronger your foundation, the higher your building is. My first impression was that he's a very loving, caring, humble man. He took us under his wing when nobody else would. Um, he didn't turn us away like um, all the people were doing. And he gave my brother the extra little spark he needed in his mind because my brother was to the point where he couldn't even move. He couldn't even talk. And he gave my little brother so much. Wait, wait. You know how these Bashir... Hey, you know how Bashir zoomed in on, on him holding hands? Do that, the same that thing. Because, you know... Because, because that's what a mother and, and like, does you know, with a son. Does. Or a father does with a son, you know? Yeah. And they try to make it out to see, be something wrong and dirty. Yeah, I, Put your back, sir. The hand holding thing. Okay. <laughs> How did that make you feel? Oh, we're on camera? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we are? Yeah, I said rolling. Oh, God! This, this is the outtakes of the... In the last few weeks, a large amount of ugly, malicious information has been released into the media about me. Apparently, this information was leaked through transcripts in a grand jury proceeding, where neither my lawyers nor I ever appeared. The information is disgusting and false. Years ago, I allowed a family to visit and spend some time in Neverland. Neverland is my home. I allowed this family into my home because they told me their son was ill with cancer and needed my help. Through the years, I have helped thousands of children who are ill or in distress. These events have caused a nightmare for my family, my children, and me. I never intend to place myself in so vulnerable a position ever again. I love my community, and I have great faith in our justice system. Please keep an open mind and let me have my day in court. I deserve a fair trial like every other American citizen. I will be acquitted and vindicated when the truth is told. Thank you.